Good morning, Axial Scale Builders around the world. It's your boy Josh, aka Coleman, and you are now watching Scale Wars, Axial's official Battle of the Builders. everybody welcome back to scale wars you already know what it is man we're about to have a battle we've got sex 10s on deck today so man that's enough said let's dive on into it i'll see you on the battleground all right everybody welcome back to the scale wars battleground uh that is a little picture let's see if we can do something about that there we go zoom in a little bit we lose some quality, but that's okay. All right, so first up today, we have uh, this beast right here. This thing's looking wicked. Um, this, uh, this I, I don't know what to call this. This SEX-10, I guess. Um, this Axial is submitted to us by a gentleman named AJ Yunt. Uh, I thought it was young, but it's Yunt, Y-O-U-N-T. And uh, he is from, <coughs> excuse me, he is from... Uh, Mog Mogador, Ohio, here in the United States. I've never heard of that place before. Uh, that is that is an interesting name. He is 16 years of age. Um, looks like he's been subscribed to ESP for about two years or so now. Um, let's see. Started building RCs about three years ago. This project we're looking at right here. This is uh, he says it's an Axial SCX10 kit, customized to my needs and fully metal caged. Welded by me. All right, no name for it though. So uh, um, we'll just call it no name for now. So detail parts list goes something like this. He says uh, it started off as a SCX10 kit about three years ago, and from there I put C hubs and rear lockouts from AGTs along with their links, which he says failed. And then he says, uh, uh, excuse me, I got some heartburn this morning. He says so I customized Red Cat racing links to fit stock plastic axles, uh, stock gear case with Robinson racing gears. June Fac uh, drive shafts, Traxxas receiver box with Tactic Remote and Savix waterproof servo shocks also came from a Red Cat. I had to put 80 weight oil in them because the rig weighs about 13 pounds and didn't want to bottom out when airborne. Uh, custom battery tray, Castle Creations SCT combo motor and ESE uh, sensorless version. He says so far no problems running for about. A year waiting for the bugs to get worked out in the censored version. And he says, last but not least, it's a custom built tube chassis welded by me. Started off with Harley Design templates. And uh, he says, made some modifications to suit my needs. Along with some hand cut aluminum body panels that are still <clears throat> waiting for sponsors or stickers, which I need, he says. Got a frog in my throat. Build classifications, trail truck, and on a scale of 1 to 10, um... Huh, I don't know if I'm reading this right, but it says two. Yeah, he says he, he put a two. He rated it a two, it says. So um, who would you like to give a shout out to? He says he'd like to give a shout out to, uh, okay, so he says, if allowed, you can come and check out my channel where I have running videos of this rig. It is called RC Trail Runners. You have to click on filters and click channels because I only have 76 subscribers. Uh, trying to get more, but we all start somewhere. Well, he's a youtuber. All right. Well shout out to you for uh, taking the leap man um, Who knows maybe he's got more subscribers by the time we Do this video so you guys go give him a give him a follow go subscribe Maybe we can boost him up over a hundred and so all right that being said let's uh, let's mod through this a little bit here We've been on this picture long enough. I think it looks good. My first impression is uh it's aggressive, man. It, it reminds me of a rock bouncer, honestly. I think it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's let's look at some of the rest of it. Obviously, no body pins here. So, <laughs> uh, all right. So right into the interior. This is passenger side interior. 
Um, yeah, you could do better. I don't see a floorboard there, but I do see that you stuffed some seats in there to kind of give it that appearance. Also stuffed a dash in there, so I do give you credit for that. Um, what I would recommend doing is just taking some styrene and building a tunnel, a floorboard, and a firewall, and then uh, you'll have that all covered up. Then you can put your seats in there. Then you could also do, like, you know, some center console stuff, kind of like you'd see in the rake, you know, see, like, uh, maybe some, you know, some twin sticks or something cool. All right, so... That being said, on the next picture, front, um, honestly, your cage works not bad, brother. I, I'm, I, it looks pretty straight for the most part. I mean, yeah, I, I can't really see your welds because they're painted over, but you know, it, that's not horrible, man. That is not bad. So, uh, and me, you know, I'm not the best judge of welding because I can't weld worth the dang anyways, but. Um, not too bad. Now, I will say, though, that your chassis in your, uh, cage does not look like it's lining up. Like, the center of this come, does not come down to the center of your, which I'm going to get here, <clears throat> your chassis piece. I don't know what this is, like a brace that you've got added on here. So, it looks like maybe you've taken a couple of hits or something like that. Maybe that needs knocked back straight, but definitely looks a little off there. Um... Yeah, big ol' looks like two two. What are those boggers? Um, like it. Panels are looking cool. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the Phillips screws. I would, you know, personally, if it was me, I'd go for a different type of screw. But that's just me. That's just a preference thing. Um, I, I just don't like Phillips. I used to use Phillips too, and I got away from them. Uh, holy cow! And you got some big washers on there. Ooh. Oh, there's that morning yawn. All right, look at those washers, my man. Those are pretty big. I don't, I don't know if those are necessary. Um, I like it though, man. I like it. I think that you took an SCX10 and you did something original with it. You made it your own, and uh, I'm not gonna hate on you for that. That's pretty cool, man. It looks like it's. Uh, it reminds me of a European style rock bouncer, you know, like European Ultra Four Buggy or something, or Trials Truck. Um, I like it though, dude. I think it's pretty cool. I like the uh, panels. I like the sticker placement. I like the netting is pretty cool. I like how you came up with that. Um, looks like it was a little difficult to get it in there with the uh, with the zip ties. I mean, not difficult, but where's my button at? There we go. Not difficult, but I would say a uh, it could have been lined up a little better. You could probably trim that up a little bit better, get it to fit just a little better. But I have a feeling that probably was a pain in the but, um, pretty cool, man. I can see your links. I can see your drive shafts. Uh, everything's looking pretty good under there. I remember you saying that uh, you had to do some modifying on some red cat links or something there. Uh, not too bad. I will say that uh, Asia T has stepped up their game a lot. So, anyways, anyways, that being said, let's keep it moving here. Underneath, looking good. You know what I'm noticing that I really like is, uh, can I zoom in? There we go. I really like that uh, you took the time to loom your wires. That is a big deal to me. I like that. Um, people underestimate how much having a little bit of wire loom helps. Uh, it'll really clean up the whole look of your build. Um, looks like your screws might be a little off there. Maybe take time, get some matching hardware in there. I used to have that same issue. I just used to use whatever I had laying around. Whatever it goes through, it goes through. It's holding up, it's holding up. But in reality, there's something to be said for having nice, clean, matching hardware, uh, a good fit and finish down to every little, you know, nut and bolt. Um, there's just something about it. Having the right screws in the right places, it just really helps. And um, so I, I just, I highly recommend taking the time. Uh, maybe look into a hardware kit. You guys know I like to use uh, Team k, k hardware kits is one of them that you guys can pick up. It, it, they have kits just for the Axial SCX-10. So you can pick up an SCX-10 kit and replace all of these uh, screws with some really nice hardware. So just throwing that out there for an idea, if, you know, something to help you out there, kind of clean this up. Um, other than that, I really like it, man. It's looking pretty good. Let's keep it going down on top. Not bad. You can really see a lot of wires here, though. Uh, I'd like to get that cleaned up. Ooh, the back's looking crazy. The cage works a little wicked. 
Uh, I'm sure this thing's really fun to drive, man. Um, looks a little off. I don't know if that's just me or what, but that cage work looks like maybe it's a little off. Maybe it took a big hit. Maybe I'm tripping. I don't know. Maybe it's just the angle, you know, we're looking at it kind of sideways. But I mean, look at, here's the pumpkin right here. The center of the pumpkin, and here's the center of the back cage is over here. So, I just, I kind of feel like it's either sitting crooked or something's just off a little bit. Um... Another interior shot, that's the driver's side. Uh, no gauges or anything, no detail, it's just kind of a blank dash in there. I like that tire squish. Um, no interior in it on this, but that's a cool shot. I think that thing's probably a blast to drive, and I think that you would probably benefit a lot from taking the time to do the finishing details. Um, it's one thing to get a rig up and going, it's another thing to take the time and really button it up, do the little details, do the things that are actually going to bring it to life, um, hide the electronics, you know, trim down your your zip ties, uh, you know, um, what else was I going to say there? Make sure that everything's aligned properly, make sure that you got the right screws, you know, the right nuts and bolts. Um, just little things like that, you know, get a driver in there, get the dash painted up, you know, get some stickers on it. Um, just stuff like that would really, really help you out. I think that uh, it would bring it to life. And did we mention this young man is only 16 years of age too. So there he is right there. There's AJ. Um, you guys, 16 years of age, he welded that up himself. Uh, I, I gotta say, maybe I'm a little rough being that he's only 16. Um, Honestly, when I was 16, I couldn't even remotely come close to building something like this. So, my hat's off to you, AJ. You're doing a good job, brother. You're on the right path. And uh, honestly, I I'm thankful that you submitted your build. Uh, proud to have you as a subscriber. And I'm looking forward to seeing where you go in the future. It looks like you got a uh, looks like you got a little collection going, which means that maybe you're going to be a lifer. Maybe you'll be building some crazy stuff here in the future. Maybe I'll see you out there. At Axial Fest on trail, driving something gnarly like this, or maybe this. Um, anyways, you guys, you know what the routine is. Jump in the comment section, give AJ some feedback, let him know what you like, what you don't like, what uh, you would like to see improve, you know, how you would go about improving it. Um, you know the rules. Be polite, don't be rude. If you can't give advice politely, then uh, just don't bother doing it. You know, you know how I feel about that stuff, man. We're here to build people up, not break them down. Uh, it's all about seeing the Axial community grow as a family. And um, this is your guys' opportunity to submit your builds. So if you want to submit your builds, head over to www.extremescaleperformance.com. Slide over to the Scale Wars tab. Everything you need to know is right there. Uh, all the rules, the regulations, um, the scoreboard, so you can see what AJ and everybody else that's been on the show has scored so far. And yeah, <sighs> that being said, let's keep it moving. On to our next build. And thank you, AJ. Thank you very much. All right, you guys. Next up, we have a gentleman named Jason Finley. And uh, Jason is, let's see, he's from Bethany, Missouri, here in the United States. He is 35 years of age. Uh, it looks like he's been subscribed to ESP. He says he's. He says I'm not sure. Been watching a year or two though. So you know, for a year or two. But uh, shout out to you, buddy. Thank you for subscribing. Um, he says he started building RCs clear back in 1995-ish. So somewhere around 95. Um, that's that's a good amount of time, man. That's a, that's some veteran stuff. Uh, he says. This project we're looking at right here, this one, he just calls it the XJ. It's an Axial SCX-102. And uh, as far as the detail parts and paint list, uh, kind of short it looks like here, but we're going to read into it. He says, pretty much stock kit with bolt-on additions here and there. RC4 wheel drive 1.9 chrome steel wagon wheels with Interco boggers, rotor hex adapters, scale-worn locking hubs, front... Um, Locking hubs in the front, sorry. Uh, Mickey Thompson hubs in the rear. Warren Winch with uh, wired controller out front. Associated 12 LED light controller. Wiring rat's nest mess, LOL, he says. 
um, and a few skull accessories, D-rings, chains with hooks, jack stands, tarp and tarp straps, using axial AE5 ESC and a 35 turn RC4 drive brushed motor, tactic servo, spectrum radio system, colors of Dura tracks, gunmetal and Tamiya candy lime green. Um, he says this truck is not finished. Uh, he says, are they ever? <laughs> that's, that's a good point. And uh, he says, it's awaiting an interior and finishing off the body and accessories. He says, thanks for taking a look. Now the build classification is a trail truck and on a scale of 1 to 10, he says, well actually he rated it twice. I don't know if that's a, a flaw in the system here or what, but he we'll go for the larger one here. He says he rates it a, t or a 3. And then, um... He, yeah, he didn't really list anybody he'd like to give a shout out to. So, that being said, let's take a peek at this bad boy. Oh, I went too far. Uh, before we run off, I want to take a peek at this here. There we go. That's what I was trying to do. Um, I like it. I think uh, I think the green is a little extreme, but at the same time, this is an axial we're dealing with here. You can't really hate on the green. You know, it's it just kind of comes with the territory. I think it looks good. Um, good use of the original kit body. I uh, love the wheel and tire combination. Love the hubs. Love the disc. Uh, the disc brakes. Uh, definitely on point, man. Definitely on point. I like the roof rack. Um, obviously, there's a couple of things here that I'm going to have to point out. One is the serious lack of an interior. There's nothing in there at all. It's just wire mess everywhere. Horrifying. We'll give you some tips on that. The second is this. Oh Lord, we've got body pans. But, um, you know, it looks like he was just building the kit and just threw it together. Uh, however, we're going to try to help you out here. So first things first is I would go ahead and delete those right there. Or since they're already there, get a jack or something. You know, RC4 drive makes a really cool jack. Get that and throw it across there. Um, the next thing I would do is I would do the interior. Now, uh, there's a couple ways you can go about doing the interior, but the easiest way, in my opinion, would be just to get the Proline one and uh, you know paint it up properly, get it in there. If you want to step it up a notch, though, you can get real crazy, do a race style interior. Um, you know, RC Furl Drive has those CC hand interiors. Actually, Asia Tees has them now as well. Uh, I, I've seen them around. They're really cool you can do like a race style cage front and then build off the back of that maybe or uh, maybe you can retrofit something you know there's some other things you can do too or if you want to do a hard body style interior I think J was it JS scale or something like that makes a cool one um, there's a, there's a few folks that 3d print interiors for the XJ so yeah just a few options to throw out there the last option would be just go ahead and hand build one it doesn't have to be styrene you could actually build one out of lexan as well you know it'd be pretty easy so um just a few options there again i love the wheel and tire combination uh let's keep it moving let's keep it moving holy cow man uh wiring mess so when it comes to the wiring um first thing i'd recommend is well i see an adapter so the first thing I would recommend doing is getting rid of this adapter. The Tamiya to Dean's or Tamiya to whatever you got going on there, Traxxas or whatever it is, adapter. Get rid of that. Chop this bad boy right there and uh, solder on a proper Dean's or your plug of choice. But uh, try to avoid those adapters, especially the Tamiya ones. These things are just notorious for dying out. Um, lose, just having bad connection. Uh, let's see. Another thing you should probably look into doing is uh getting some more of this wire loom right here it looks like you started um get some more of that and go through and just loom everything up group up your wires zip tie them and loom them up uh, if you need to extend them chop them you know extend them um you know with some solder and, and some extra wire and then make sure you use heat shrink and uh put them back together you know it's it's all doable I like the back end here, that's looking nice. Very nice. I always like to see some recovery gear. Oh yeah, front's looking good too. Got the worn uh, strap on there, very nice, a little pull strap. I like it, man. Woo, I like it a lot. Uh, let's keep it moving. What do we got here? Clean underneath. This looks like maybe he's done some more wiring since the other picture, because I see some more loom going here. Good, man. 
Not bad. It's nice and clean underneath. Pretty much stock looking, but very nice and clean. I say it with the new SEX 10Ts, you don't really have to do a whole lot. Um, they are really tough right out of the box. So uh, unless you're getting pretty crazy on your builds, uh, they hold up pretty well. Um, I think he's just got this open to show off the electronics. Maybe I'm not really sure, but nice layout. You know, everything's looking clean. Uh, you just you know you got wires everywhere. That's the real problem there. This looks good. I like the front of this. Looks nice. Jack stands. Everything's looking good, man. A little three tons. Yeah, I like it. Looking good. I like how you got a bunch of bungee cords up there. That means you can always add more stuff if you want to. You got the right idea, man. You're you're really you're already heading the right direction with this. You know, you're like look at that. That is beautiful. He's got scale hardware, he's got the scale worn hubs, he's got the scale disc brakes, they're all drilled rotors. Um, just beautiful. I like it. That's what I love to see. Uh, look at this now. Now we're talking. Look at the wires. Proper, dude. That is properly done right there. That's what I like to see. Look at all those wires tucked, zip tied, loomed, not too tight, just nice and snug. Ran along the chassis rails, just oh man, that is beautiful. Well done, right there. So, I like to see. And there it is. Look, oh yeah, see, it looks like he cleaned up a lot of those wires inside. So, props to you, man. Good job, good job. He's well on the way, dude. I'm looking forward to seeing this. Uh, hopefully, you'll resubmit this, dude. I'd like to see full interior done up in this. You know, I hope I'm sure you beat up on it by now, but still, I would love to see this resubmitted. Uh, with a full interior, you know, you'll get a lot more points that way. And, uh, you know, also maybe some uh, inner fenders, wheel wells, you know what I mean? Um, little things like that would be cool. Get a spare on there. That would really look awesome. Uh, you could even put that up in your rack. And, yeah, it looks good, man. It looks really good. And, uh, unfortunately, we don't have a face shot, but that is Jason Finley's arm there. <laughs> so, shout out to Jason. Thank you very much for submitting your build. You guys, jump in the comments. Give him some feedback. What do you think about this XJ? I think it's pretty slick, honestly. Uh, at first, I wasn't digging the green at all, but now it's starting to grow on me a little bit. I'd almost like to see it carried through in stickers on the back windows. You know, the back three windows just have stickers all over and maybe have a couple of green ones thrown in the mix. Maybe do some, you know, axial green style graphics down the side or something or all across the hood. I don't know. I think that would look cool. But I, I, it's a good looking build, dude. It's, it's off to a good start. So props. Plus, you guys know I love my Jeeps. Anyways, uh, that is it for this one, you guys. And uh, I think we're going to head on to our next one. You know what it is. Jump in the comments. Give Jason some feedback. Um, you want to see what he's scored? Jump on over to the website, www.extremescaleperformance.com. Slide over to the Scale Wars tab. His score will be there along with everybody else's. And uh, you can go ahead and submit your axial base builds there. Get those builds submitted, man. I want to see a whole bunch of fresh stuff on here. I've got a lot of people still to work through. But if you don't, you know, the sooner you submit, the sooner you're going to get on the show. Some of these take a few months to get out. But... That's okay. It's all right. Eventually, we're going to speed it up, and uh, you're going to want to make sure that yours got submitted before everyone else's. So, on to our next build. On to our next build. All right, you guys, our third and final build. This one right here is uh, this one's from a gentleman named Tristan Eccles. Uh, I believe I'm saying that right. E C H E L S. And uh, Tristan is, where's he from? He's from Dallas, Texas. My man. Texas in the house. He is 21 years of age. Uh, he's been subscribed to ESP for a few months now, he says. Started building RCs back in 2016, so he's, he's fairly fresh to the game. And uh, this project we're looking at right here, he says he calls it the Mini Daredevil Axial SCX-10. And um, let's see, detailed parts and paints, detailed parts and paint list goes like this. Night Custom Smitty built Fenders and front bumper, RC four wheel drive, ballistic off road wheels, 2.2 .2 wheels with 1.9 tires, snap on light bar, um, C and D hydro graphics, stickers and paint. Paint is the exact paint code as my full size Jeep. All right, shout out to you for being a uh, one one Jeeper as well. Um, Walmart stormtroopers, homemade recovery straps. Uh, 550 paracord and bungee hooks and Instagram he says is at daredevil jeeper shameless plug and uh, build classification let's see trail truck 
Um, on a scale of one to ten, he rates this a nine. He's laying it down, bro, with a nine. Um, he says, uh, as far as who he'd like to give a shout out to, he'd like to give a shout out. He says, I want to thank my wife for dealing with my Jeep obsession, big and small. Ah, I think my wife can relate to that too. <laughs> All right. So that being said, man, let's take a peek at this bad boy. He's rating it a nine. I don't know if we're going to go for a nine here, but, uh, we're definitely going to take a peek. First off, sir. Absolutely, you got to disagree with the nine because you have body pins, my man. No, can do. However, uh, that's an easy fix. You know what I mean. And honestly, out of all the axial bodies, I think that this JK and the new XJ are my two favorite ones. Um, I just love this. For a factory body, this JK is probably one of the coolest bodies with some of the coolest upgrades available ever. So you know, I, I, I ain't hating on it. I ain't hating on it, but maybe do something about hiding these wicked looking things right there, you know, do the, do the typical, uh, uh, what was that called? The <laughs> high lift jack had a moment, uh, do the typical high lift jack across there or something just to hide them. That would really help out. Um, blue frame rails. Woo. That's an interesting choice. Did not see that coming. Um, the two twos with the one nine stretched, honestly, with those big lug mud terrain tires, it looks good. I'm not gonna lie. I, I like the big rims. Um, you know, it's a lot of JKs run bigger wheels. Oh, oh, there's that morning yawn one more time. All right, but a lot of JKs run bigger wheels. Just you know, that's a well-known fact. Um, so it, it's a good way to replicate it. And then uh, let's see the fenders, the Knight Custom fenders. They look sick, man. Uh, honestly, I love those fenders. Uh, Night Customs bumper also looking sick. I like it. Um, it just looks good. He's got a little mini uh, ambush up on top of there. That's interesting. Now, let's keep it moving. Here it is all uh, sitting on the shelf, just hanging out. The painted links, the painted chassis. I don't know if I'm feeling that. It is unique, though. Definitely unique. Um, not too bad. So um, disc brakes would definitely benefit you with these big old wheels. You can see right in there. So the disc brakes would look awesome on this one for sure. Um, that bumper is just killer. I have that same bumper. I can't wait to use it. Oh lord, what is that big old screw hanging off there? Um, not only is that not the best looking because I, it's you know not necessary it shouldn't be there but that can also hang up on some things causing some issues and if your tire gets pushed over too far you know in an off camber situation or something with a load on it you could hook that on your tire in reverse and really 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 do some damage I've seen that happen before actually oh here's another shot looking good oh still running that axial motor in there is that the original 27 turn or I don't even know what May 35 turn. Um not bad man. It's a good looking rig. Stormtroopers out doing work on the rocks. <laughs> that was an acorn. A little acorn down there. That's a good looking rig and that light bar is pretty bright too. Interesting looking light bar, by the way. Um I don't know about the giant zip ties on there. Not a fan of those, but that is very interesting. It almost looks like is that a flashlight? I feel like that's a flashlight. Like that's the handle and it is. Interesting. I mean now I'm not going to hate on you for using a flashlight because I'm all about using what you got around before spending a bunch of money. So that is a uh, that's an innovative use of a flashlight to create a light bar. Actually not going to hate on that. Uh, that's pretty pretty cool. Um stormtroopers no, no comment all right so lots of recovery straps going on back here i don't know if you need all of those but definitely cool that you've got some recovery gear on deck uh texas cowboy i like the sticker I like stick placement looks like some more stickers there looks like he's been out mudding 85 ESC in there. 
it's just a good looking rig all around, man. Um, it's not not that bad. It just you know it's still got a lot that you could do to bring it up to a more realistic level. Some inner fenders. Uh, Axial actually makes inner fenders that are really really cool. Um, would work perfect for this. Um, I know Knight Customs. You have Knight Customs parts. They also make an inner fender that's really cool. I have some myself. Um, what else would be cool? The scale hardware would really look cool on those wheels. Uh, getting rid of that little funky light bar and getting a real light bar on there would definitely help as well. Um, and some realistic drivers. That's you know that's what I'd recommend. I think that would help out a lot. I love the color. You said it matches your one one. I think you got a beautiful one one if that's the actual color. Probably <laughs> is that the, is, maybe I'm seeing it wrong, but that looks like almost like a brandy one, man. It's just a really cool color. Um, didn't he say actually? Uh, CNG hydrographics. No, he doesn't say actual colors, but I like it. I like it. It's a good looking shot right there. Stormtroopers out doing work. Uh, maybe get a matching spare would be awesome if you get the chance. Um, I like it, dude. This thing's not bad. Are you missing your tail lights though? Am I seeing that right? Looks like you're missing tail lights there. So I'd probably add those as well. Um, other than that, there's another shot of the inside, the back of it. I already saw. And there he is, Tristan, Tristan Eccles. So, Tristan, um, I like it. I think it's off to a good start. I think that you should chase a little bit more of a realistic driver in there instead of the Stormtroopers. I know everybody loves the Stormtrooper, though. Uh, but having some realistic drivers in there, a realistic light bar, and uh, some sort of something to cover up these... Uh, body clips right here would really set it off having a matching spare would also really set it off so um, that's my recommendations when you get the opportunity I would also suggest getting a winch on there and um, other than that man this thing is beautiful it's a cool looking rig I like your choice of parts so far the night custom stuff looks awesome um, the paint job not 100% sure how I feel about the baby blue but you know I, I ain't hating bro you do you I think it's a, I think it's a good way to stand out, be unique, and uh, it's not tacky. It's actually not horrible. So, um, yeah, it, it's kind of growing on me. It is growing on me a little bit. So, all right. Anyways, you guys. That being said, you know what to do. Head over to Scale Wars. Uh, head over to Scale Wars. You know, you know what to do. Head over to Extreme Scale Performance. Uh, www.extremescaleperformance.com. Slide over to Scale Wars tab. Everything you need to know is right there. If you want to submit your builds, all the rules, the regulations, the uh, form to fill out, all that good stuff. Also, the scoreboard is right there so you can keep track of everybody's scores. And, um, yeah, that being said, I am. Uh, I think I'm going to call it. I think I'm going to get off here and go enjoy my day. I'm getting tired sitting here. So, you guys, thank you very much for watching. If you stayed until now, you're the real MVP. Head over to... Uh, head over to... Well, while you're on the website, head over and pick up a t-shirt. We've got a little store there on the website, a little shop, and uh, you can pick up Scale Wars t-shirts if you want to support Scale Wars. Uh, every, a little bit of everything goes to uh, charities. You know, I try to switch up the charities and donate to different charities. So, um, you know, it's not just all going to me, but yeah, it definitely helps out with the show. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm getting up out of here, you guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. You know what it is. Peace of chicken grease, fam. Yeah, yeah.